So excited to be here. Wow, what an amazing stage, right? I think it's one of the better stages I have ever seen. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very honored that I'm allowed to be here in front of you guys. Um, but I can imagine, like, it has been a long day, right? You guys have taken in a lot of information the whole day. Um, so I have something that ha can help you and can help me. <laughs> so I can already see some faces like, oh, my, what is this girl wanting to do and what she's going to ask of me? Uh, well, <laughs> I have this dream that I would stand up on a stage and would talk to you guys well, about Kotlin, check, I'm going to do that. But next to that, how cool would it be if I would be able to orchestra a Mexican wave? That's amazing, right? In a stadium, in a soccer stadium, and then a Mexican wave. It must be amazing. So I hope that you guys are willing to help me with this. Um, it would be very embarrassing if everybody would stay seated. Yeah? Okay. So let's not do that. <laughs> the idea is the following. We start on this side. And then when you see your neighbor standing up, raising their hands, then a few seconds later, you go as well. And we just go from left to right for my perspective, right? All right. So for the people on that side, I am your neighbor. Yeah? So if I count and I go up, then you go up as well. All right? Are we ready? One, two, three. Woo! Yes, 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 yes! Woo! Wow, applause for you. Cool, cool. Nice. Well, that was, an, uh, <laughs> that was a great start. Now I think we're ready uh, to really start off. Today I'm going to talk with you guys about plugins that will support the full spectrum of the Kotlin features. Because we're now six years along, right, from the 0 .1, of the 1.0 version. So we're now getting to the point where we get really nice plugins, which we can use, and um, yeah, that are sufficient. So let's get to it. First of all, I'm Simone de Geit. You already heard it probably. I work for Open Value, and my current assignment is with Quinn. You might have seen them around in the booth or uh, on the posters. Um, but not le let's not stick too long to that because I don't have a lot of time. Um, and we're going to talk about two plugins today. We're going to talk about Cover and Kitty Lint, and both of them are about verifying your Kotlin project and making sure that the quality is as you want it to be. And if we have some time, I really hope so, we're going to go to the IDA and see the configurations, okay? Cool. Let's start off. Cover. What is Cover? Well, Cover is a Hungarian politician. And apparently his name is very suiting because yesterday a Hungarian uh, colleague, the, uh, a Hungarian speaker, came to me and told me that Cover means fat in uh, Hungarian. So I think that is about his moustache, right? Like <laughs> a very fat moustache. But we're not going to talk about this guy. Well, if you would pronounce cover in Dutch, and you would say, uh, go to uh, like a shop and say, uh, I want to have a cover, you get a suitcase. So for all non-Dutch speakers, there you go, cover. But no, we're really going to talk about a great plugin uh, for uh, the code coverage agents, IntelliJ and Jacoco. So what is cover, uh, code coverage? Let's start very basic. It's a, it's a way of verifying your project, right? To see how many lines of code you have reached via your tests. And those tests can be unit tests, integration tests, contract tests, mutation tests, you name it. Um, well, it's very intuitive. If the line is green, you've hit it. If it's red, the test didn't go there. And if it's yellow, it's about branches, so multiple situations that you can hit, but in this case have not been satisfied. So as you can see, we now here, we covered the true scenario, but we didn't go to the false scenario. So that is what code coverage is. And then we have a couple of tools to help us with that or to visualize that. So first of all, we have IntelliJ IDA, which is brilliant 
if you're an IntelliJ user, when you're using Eclipse or any other IDA, you're already pretty screwed. Um, next to that, you cannot use it outside of your IDA, which is quite sad because nowadays we all use pipelines, right? We want to have CI/CD, and we want to like have it before going to a next environment. We want to have it checked, and with this, you only will verify it locally. But it does handle Kotlin pretty well. But yeah, so it's not optimal. Then we have to Coco. Most of you guys might have heard of it. It's pretty uh, famous, well known. Um, but it has some quirks with Kotlin. So if you are using a lot of Kotlin specific features, Ninja Coco is likely to not catch all of your lines of code. For example, if we look at this class. It's just like a dummy class. It has three methods. The first method is an inline function. So it takes a lambda as an argument, it returns a string. Um, the second method is just a standard method with no input, and it will go to that inline function, it will print out hello world, and it will return the string as well. Then the third method is a method with a nullable string as an input. If you enter null, then it will fall back to that standard Greek. And if it's not null, then it will go directly to the inline function and it will print out your name like hello someone, uh, hello Kotlin Dev Day, and then return that string. So if we would have this test, assert that, and we have, we go to uh, service.greet, so the, the last function right here, um, but we enter no, how many methods do we think will be hit? Oh, maybe I'm very much in front of this. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, how many methods do we think is covered? Can we raise hands like two, three, one? I see some one, one, two, one, two. Okay, okay, good. It's quite a variant. That's great. Okay, so it goes to green. And if Jacoco would cover this, um, or no, like if you would, ex how you would expect it is it goes to greet, but it's no, so it falls back to your standard greet, set second method, right? Goes to your second uh, standard greet, and then it falls back to the inline function. So three methods should have been hit when I execute this line of code, or when I test this. But unfortunately, if you look at your Jacoco report, you see that the inline function, <laughs> is zero. So there, like the inline function has not been hit, and fo if I follow this report, I would say that only two methods have been covered. And I can tell you, that's not true. It's actually three. This is one of the Jococo bugs. Like it cannot handle the inline function. Next to that, you might have seen a slight difference in the very first picture I showed you, and this weird looking table. Like, why don't I see a class? Why don't I see the lines of code? It's annoying, I don't know which lines of code were explicitly missed and stuff like that. Um, that is mainly because Kotlin um, uses a Kotlin directory structure. So uh, instead of having your uh, org.example in your full structure, you can just place that in your Gradle file and go uh, uh, directly, immediately, uh, to, the, to the greeting service uh, and put a package there. But Jacoco, being a Java tool, is confused. Like, it, it looks to org.example.greeting, but that package is not there. Like, there's only a greeting package, but that, like, that doesn't match. So it cannot find it, and therefore you get this weird looking table. All right, then some advantages of cover, because cover is going to fix all of that for you. Because cover is uh, explicitly for uh, Kotlin, and it's provided by JetBrains, which is very nice, because we all know JetBrains is an established company. We just know they deliver quality. Uh, they have good people on it. So that's already pretty nice, right? Um, it's also fully integrated with uh, Gradle Toolkit, and it uh, supports multi-platform projects. It is also very nice for Kotlin Android users. Um, it can handle stuff with instrumentation classes, um, and then like it doesn't have all those weird uh, quirks that you would have in Jacoco. 
Some considerations, however, are that it's still in experimental phase. So this came out, I think, half a year ago in December uh, from uh, Kotlin 1.6 on. Um, and also JetBrains has said that it's still experimental. Um, just something to keep in mind. Um, it's currently only available for Gradle. So if you're a Maven user, unfortunately, you're not really able to use this plugin. Um, then in the configuration, you can choose if you want to use Cover with the engine IntelliJ or with the engine um, Jacoco. If you would use Jacoco, which is not the default, the default is IntelliJ, but if you would configure it to use Jacoco, then uh, the report would still be like a table, as I showed you before. So just some consideration to bear in mind. Um, and then I think the last one, which is um, the most important one for me, is that the verification is currently only online level. So I personally like it a lot that I put some verification threshold inside uh, my project and that my build will fill if the coverage is, for example, below 85. I'm just saying something. Uh, but unfortunately, um, with cover, you can only put that threshold based on a line level. So in the first example with that branch, so with the if statement, it would have been added to that percentage. It wouldn't say like, oh, you missed one out of two. Um, it is in the report, but you cannot verify on it. Uh, cover has already uh, submitted that they will put this in the next iteration. So they already committed to the fact that it will be there, but at the moment, yeah, it's not. All right, now we go to Kitty Land. I'm just going to check how far along I am. Yes, okay. Um, then we go to Kitty Lind. Kitty Lind is a linter, um, which is pretty nice. And for all our cat lovers, there you go. I know uh, we have one in the, <laughs> in the room, in the business, but probably more. Um, so what is a linter? A linter is something that verifies your style. In this uh, example, you can see some issues like uh, the imports are not uh, ordered correctly. There's some imitations, some spacing that's wrong. Um, and the linter would detect that for you. The linter would say, okay, this is not like the style we agreed on. And then the formatter is the one that puts it back into place as it belongs. Then the advantages, I don't really need to go over it, right? It's just like, great, you don't want to spend time on it, sure. Then we have some options. I think for uh, Kotlin, uh, Pinterest is the most known, right? Uh, my, you might have heard of it. Um, <laughs> it's a static uh, code analysis tool. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. It follows the Kotlin official style guide, what is, which is great, right? But personally, I really like to use the GL Lightshoe plugin. It's a great wrapper around Pinterest. It's still like interest in the core, but it's a wrapper around it, and you get some really nice Gradle tasks with it, which can be easily configured and stuff. So, very nice. And then for all Maven users, we have Gensign. I never used it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, check it out. If you're a Maven user, uh, that's your thing, probably. Okay, then I'm not really going to talk about this, but I just wanted to point it out there uh, because I don't have time to go over it, but Detect is also a great plugin and it's more about the code smells. So instead of having uh, a linter and going through your style, this is more about complexity, right? So in this example, you have four conditions in your if statement, which uh, Detect would fill on because it says it this uh, has reached the threshold of four, and four is too complex, so I will go off. So it's a pretty nice um, tool as well, but we're not really going over it today. Then, I want to have a quick demo, and we'll go into the project and see some configurations. Uh, I put in some uh, GitHub example projects there as well, because I'm, I wasn't sure how much time we had, so you can check it out over there as well. All right. Let's switch. Yeah. 
Hoopla. All right, there we go. Um, so here we have our IDA. As you can see, I grayed out your cocoa. Uh, I obviously did that to uh, implement the cover plugin. And good to know is that at this moment, I have no uh, further configuration set. So I only use the cover one. So, oops, no, don't do that. Ooh. Yes, All right. If I would do a clean build now, I especially do a clean build just to make sure that you guys see that it's building up from scratch and that you're real, really getting the real deal. So uh, it's executing right now. It will probably be there in a second. The project is not that big. Um, yeah, here we go. So as you can see, we have here the two packages. Uh, I go to greeting. I will make it bigger in a second. Hello, are you going now? Okay, this is it. Is everybody able to see it? <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the example before, this line was red, right? The inline uh, function with your Jococo one. Now it's green. So cover is actually seeing the inline function and knows what to do with it. So that's already great. Um, but for the people that paid close attention, you might have seen something weird, like there's a task class inside this report and it's actually adding to the total score. And the same goes in our example, we have some application things going on there and again, a test. It's not really nice, like I, I don't wanna have it in there. Uh, so I go back to in, uh, the IDA. Something good to know is that Cover is not putting all the task classes by default into the uh, into the report. It's only because I use a separate source folder for iTest. So everything that is in the normal task class will not be in the report, but because I use an I test, or if you would use a contract test source folder, something like that, then it doesn't pick up the fact that it, that's a task class. So you need to configure it out explicitly. Um, but we can do that, no problem, no problem. So we have here a section, it's underneath tasks. Um, let me grade it out. Um, and it's about uh, generating how you want to generate that uh, HDMI. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm now graying out uh, the Jococo. Sorry. Yeah, here we go. The HTML report. And I now say I want to exclude those test and application uh, folders. So meanwhile, I already go over some other things while, oh, no. Well, I did this. Hoopla. Okay, so here we have another section, uh, what you can add, and that's the verify, as we talked about before. Um, as you can see, it's now only online level. I put it very strict, <laughs> um, just to uh, so that I'm able to show you guys in a second that it will fill on it. As you can see already, it only contains now one class per uh, per method or per package. Sorry. Um, yeah, so now everything is configured out. That's great. Um, and now that I added the verify to it, if I would run the build again, uh, then we would actually be able to let the build fill upon this rule, which is very nice. Uh, let me just check how many minutes. Yeah, right. Okay, great. Um, okay, then here we have an extra configuration uh, setting area. Uh, by default, all instrumentation classes are enabled. So if you have instrumentation classes in your project, they will be taken into account, which is very nice because I think it's quite unique. Uh, but if you don't want uh, cover to do that, you can disable it in this section, uh, as you see. Um, then we have the coverage agent. Uh, that's what I already said. Like by default, it's IntelliJ, but you can change it to Jacoco. Um, the report is normally being done before the check. So if something is up with the report and is not verifying right or the report is broke or anything like that, your check will fail. If you don't want that, if you want to have it like next to it, then you can put this generate on report uh, is true and then the check will not fail. You can disable certain projects if you use like a multi-module um, project. Uh, there are some settings, especially for Android users, and again, something for the multi-module uh, projects. Uh, 
So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to gray this out again and like I can show you guys that the build will probably fill now because I put it that verification on a hundred. And if we would have looked at the report, we can already see that the line coverage was like 71. And indeed it failed and it told me where, yeah, here, that the percentage is now 71. Great. Um, and expected the minimum is 100. So that is it about cover. Then Kitty Lint. Kitty Lint is a linter, as I, we already went over. Um, what I like about Kitty Lint is that it has an additional plugin. Uh, the plugin can be found in your marketplace. Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not at the moment, I'm not uh, connected to the internet, but it's there, so you can find it and you can enable it via your tool section. Oh uh, yeah, and if you have it enabled, the good thing about it is the fact that you will see red lines, which normally wouldn't happen. Like now, I immediately see that I done something wrong and that I should like prepare it. So that is what the plugin for from uh, IntelliJ will do for you. Uh, next to that, uh, which is really nice, is that you can add a pre-commit hook. So if you're pushing your code to GitLab, GitHub, anything like that. You you can say, okay, I want to have it checked before my commit. If you do that, it will, if you commit something and you press enter, it will check and it will commit. So the commit will, will succeed. It will commit the thing you already did. And then it will show all the errors or all the kitty lint thingies that are up as like a section below that. If you want to fix that, you should do that in an extra commit. But they also have a format pre, uh, commit hook, and that one is actually formatting it for you before doing executing the actual commit. So if you trust Kitty Lint and you're just like, go for it, just change my code, then you can uh, add that pre-commit hook, and then you are certain that the pipeline will not fail at least on the form heading uh, errors, which is pretty nice. Um, if you have an existing project and you don't want to fix all the issues, you can create a baseline um, and make sure that you don't, um, yeah, that you that you don't need to fix everything at once. That you can like plan it in or something. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, a good thing to know is for KittyLint, you can add some additional rules. If you have custom rules, if your company has custom rules, you can add that. Uh, but it works as a separate module. Um, so you need to implement then a multi-module uh, project. Um, I also made an example project for that. If that's something that you're really interested in, you can check it out and see how that configuration goes. Um, but for now, we leave it out of here. Um, all right, I think um, that's pretty much it. I go back to my presentation. Here we go. So these were the URLs again. These were the sources, always nice to know. Right? And um, yeah, these are my contacts. That's my PowerPoint slide if you want to check it out. Um, and if you have any questions, you can ask them now. We have some time, I think. Yeah, we have time for one question. And otherwise, we can have drinks during the network borrow. Borrow, <laughs> network drinks. <laughs> and uh, you can ask me all kinds of questions. <laughs> Is there a question? No? I think it was a clear story. Cool. Thank you so much, Simona. Welcome. For your talk.